This is Earth Files, the award-winning news site with the latest updates in science, environment, and real X-Files. Podcasting in-depth reports beyond the 6 o'clock news by Emmy Award-winning journalist Linda Moulton Howe. Recently in my Earth Files mail, I received a four-page typed and very well-written letter from a successful attorney living and working on the West Coast. For more than three decades, this man, whom I will call John Smith, to honor his request for anonymity, has kept secret his interactions with a non-human intelligence. First, he trusted them, but he now worries that the agenda of the particular type he has encountered is to manipulate and suppress humans. Attorney Smith's abduction experiences have included being taken right through a wall, examinations by non-humans of his head and genitals, and visions of an apocalyptic Earth future. Guiding Attorney Smith through his experiences was a telepathic voice that entered his life with winning raffle tickets and other inside information that convinced John Smith that he was being given special protection by extraterrestrial or other dimensional intelligences. He's not even sure. Attorney Smith is now 57 years old and says his first memories of high strangeness go back to odd, repeating dreams he began having around age 25. They sort of centered around an awareness of entities around me, and I would become literally paralyzed in my bed and feel this extraordinary pressure that had a sound associated with it that was really quite disturbing. Could you please be detailed about where you felt the pressure physically and perhaps try to mimic the sound? The sound would be a very powerful thrumming, as if we had very powerful sound amplifiers. Not like a 60-cycle hum, but we're getting close in saying that. Do you mean that it was something going like, mmm, mmm, mmm? Yeah, something like that, but increasing in intensity. And I was aware that these entities were having communication between themselves, saying things like, well, we're not in yet, wonder if we can get in. That, for some reason, registered my awareness. And where did you feel the pressure? In my head. Was it around your entire head, or was it a band, or where? I would say it was the back of my head towards the bottom of the skull, at the base of the skull. What would be the earliest age, and what do you remember consciously happening? At that time, I think I'm in my late 20s. Out of that time period, really, that's all I recall. And I recall that my wife at that time would be awakened by my noises afterwards and be quite startled, and apparently she was out too until I came out of whatever. And would your noises be screams or other sounds? Yeah, she described my sounds as being terrified, muffled screams. And did you have any recall consciously or the residue in dreams after about anything specifically happening between you and non-human looking entities? Not during that first episode. I certainly have more precise recall from later episodes. Well, then let's jump to what you remember as the most vivid in which you had conscious memory and what age would that have been? Well, now we're probably fast-forwarding maybe another 10 years, and that took place after I moved from one house in the area that I lived to another. It was just a very lively house. But little did I know that uh, it, for some reason, seemed to be far more open I've been questioning since whether certain areas on the planet are just more portals to this interdimensional activity. From the time I moved into that house, then the visitations became more frequent, far more intense, and I was far more prone to have some recall on it. The typical thing that would happen would be nighttime, there might be some events preceding it, like my animals getting a little bit out of control, I had some motion-sensitive security lights outside my house and they would flash on and off and I'd go to the windows, nothing there and finally, for some reason I'm asleep or think I am and then I would see clearly alien presences, nothing that I've ever seen on this earth, Uh, believe me when it happens to you it's absolutely startling, 
terrifying, something that you have to live through to appreciate. But usually there would be two different types of beings, a taller variety and then a shorter variety. And following my awareness of their presence, I would literally be pulled straight through my bedroom wall and directly up into a spacecraft. Now, before we go into the craft, could you paint word pictures of the taller one and the shorter one? The taller ones were thinner. They tended to be lighter in color. The shorter ones were darker in color and quite a bit shorter, maybe three feet tall, something on that order. And the taller ones tended to be much lighter in color, almost a shiny appearance. The darker, shorter ones, hard to make out much detail. Some people have had the impression of metallic coating in some entities. Can you describe, when you say shiny, color and texture on the taller ones? I would have to say it was kind of a silvery sort of appearance. How tall were the taller ones? They were five to six feet tall. And do you remember any kind of clothing at all? The shorter ones seem to have some kind of clothing, but I would be speculating on its nature other than it seemed foreign to me. And the tall ones then, in their silvery shininess, did you have any sense of clothing of any kind or were completely nude from our point of view? I would tend to think it's the latter case, uh, Linda. It, it seemed to me that it was either a one-piece kind of arrangement or maybe their natural state. How thin in comparison to a human body? Much thinner, quite thin. Okay, let's go back in the room preceding going through the wall, and can you describe this in detail and continue on into wherever you end up? What struck me is the suddenness of the event of being pulled directly through the wall. It was as if the wall just did not exist. My bed was located directly below an exterior window, and I would be pulled not through the window, but directly through the wall and immediately up into the spacecraft. And I cannot tell you how far the spacecraft was above my home. And frankly, Linda, I can't even tell you if it was in the same dimension, whether it was in some degree almost as if being pulled into another dimension. Can you elaborate on that? This is the second time you've said that these might be other dimensional rather than extraterrestrial biological entities from inside this galaxy or someplace. You know, that's just been my sense. I couldn't defend it scientifically. I just have a settled impression that they may simply do one of two things. Either they are literally from another dimension or their mode of travel incorporates interdimensional aspects much as science postulates that we could go in a black hole and come out the other end somewhere. And that may account for the fact that essentially someone winks in and out of existence at one point into another. So whether they are entirely in another dimension, I can't tell you, but I certainly can say it's been my direct experience that they are very, very capable of moving through space-time in ways that we don't understand that I would associate with having mastery of the ability to go from one form into another. But my impression at that moment was that the journey from my bedroom to the spacecraft was rather quick, and there was not a lot of sensation of floating for a long period of time on my way up. It was, boom, gone. Thanks for listening to this Earth Files podcast from the edges of science, environment, and real X-Files. Go to www.earthfiles.com to see more than a thousand Earth Files reports with photographs, drawings, and documents. And visit Earth Files every day, every week, for new reports and new podcasts. That's www.earthfiles.com. 